record it. We'll just start recording now. Can edit it out later. All right. Uh, this is part two. Uh, we're gonna be suturing the abscess too. Yeah, feel free. The, the camera's actually waterproof. Oh, help. Oh, sure, sure. Well, we can just... He'll do this in one. a minute. And then we'll watch it. <laughs> so, yeah, feel free to get in there. The camera's waterproof, so if it gets anything splattered on it, it's not going to be a big deal. Wash it off. Going into the extraction side, I want to see if I get any, any further drainage. If I get some more away. I'm not getting any further drainage, so we'll go to an antibiotic here. What I'm not pleased with, though, is I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with how the bone is fitting together, but it's almost as if we've laid a, a, a slight flap right here, and I'd feel better if we bring that up and a little tighter to the tooth. We'll get a better healing, plus then I don't have to be concerned at all that I'll lose this, uh, this portion of bone here that's separated from the from the cortical plate. So we're going to suture right across here, not leaving, uh, not leaving our knot, of course, across the uh, extraction site. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Need to dab up a little bit now? Yes, if you would, please. Yeah. I'm going to use a 3-0 polyester primarily because it's what I have. You can get as much light as we can in here. You want to grab a flashlight for me? It's right here, Jay. Sure. Just keep it with the left hand. Okay, and let's have her open a little bit wider. I'm going to come right through here. A little larger than I'd use at home, and I also would not use uh, polyester necessarily. She will return. We'll treat this just like we would a, a silk suture. Gut's harder to work with, but the nice thing about gut is the patient doesn't need to return. It, it's resorbable. Okay. that as short as possible. As Audrey found out the other day when she did her first sutures, you leave it really long, you got a lot to pull through. Excuse me. I'm going to lay this right here. Again, it's a lot longer than I want to work with. I could do probably uh, a mattress across the entire arch with all this. But we're not. We're going to do a single. I'm going to tighten it until you see a slight blanching in the tissue. I don't want to do too much, but I want a slight blanch. I'm going to leave my knot to the buckle. For no other reason than I can see it better here. Okay. If I did this in my office, I would absolutely have the patient have a have a debridement of the calculus that's crossed all of her lower teeth. You see that we call it a bridge of calculus. It's calcified uh, plaque material. You can see it all across here. That's uh, full of bacteria. My area here where I'm suturing, you see how the how we've got nice, nice uh, attachment here. This will reattach right in this area. 
the surgical site will close up. This will close around the back tooth. This bone will reform and reattach also. We should have an excellent result with this. Uh, the only thing I would like to do is I would like to get a little bit of this calculus off right here and here and not get it down into my extraction site. <clears throat> And then Jay is going to help us. He's going to going to cut us loose here. Cut the threads. Just going to do the one. That's exactly what you're going to do. I feel a little better about that and that sight now. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pull this up. And where do you think we want to cut this? Close to the base as possible, or you want to give me a little room, right about the, a little closer. There, right about there. Why would you do that? Uh, so it doesn't come loose, and also so it doesn't get she doesn't chew there. on it and get it. Yeah. Also, you can see if you cut too close, you won't know if it, if it starts to unravel on you. You need to leave a little bit of room so you can check the tension, make sure nothing moves, which it doesn't. Look at how nice and tight this is. It's okay. going to heal great. Okay, great. Now we've had problems with some anesthesia on the other side. I'm not quite sure why, but my thinking is that we probably have an abscess that she hasn't noticed and probably some necrotic bone where those two root tips, well, they're not true. They're almost two entire roots are still there. Crown of the tooth is missing. But I'd like to get those out now too. So let's see if we can do that. Again, we use an elevator between the teeth. Okay, you got a good view of that. Bring it a little forward, Jay, so we, right, so easy over the top. There you go, perfect. We had to get rid of our last cameraman. He just wasn't doing a good enough job. <laughs> You see how this is lifting out? So we have Simon back, right Simon? Good to see you. Yeah. You're on the new payroll. Next stop, Hollywood. Yeah. I'm gonna try to finesse this out with no forceps. There we go. What we see on the end there is the remnants of an abscess. So that's exactly what's on the end there. So take that out. I'm going to get rid of that. We're going to go for the back one. We're going to turn the uh, elevator the opposite direction, the rounded concave side against our good tooth, the other one with the sharper edges against the, the root we want to remove. We're going to do the same thing again in the opposite direction. Get a little spacing, try to lift it. This should be easier because we're pushing into a space we've already created. And there's our other root. Bring that forward. And let's look at the tissues. If we look in here. If we look in here. We're still very well attached. You got a kind of a crepitous sound down in here when I'm touching. That leads me to believe my crest is fine, but further down I feel a little hollow space. And I have a little slight cracking sound. That's an abscess that's been in place for a long, long time and we've lost a lot of bone down here. I'm guessing probably possibly years. And uh, we're going to hope that now that those roots are out of there, that this will begin to reform bone. This is this area of bone loss is clear down here. Well down into the vestibule. I can feel it with my finger. Up here I have a nice crestal bone still present. So we're just going to pack this. Laying a suture over here doesn't do anything. We're, we're solid across the top. We need bone refilling down here. At home I would backfill that with a bovine bone or some other type of synthetic. Okay, let's pack that up and she's done. Uh -huh.
Que j'ai à ce que là. Ouais, t'as. How are we looking? Very nice. And Jay, let's pack the other side. We've already got a clot forming. This looks very nice. Great. Right. Okay. Instructions. She's going to return and see us before we leave. Uh, we're going to shoot for two days since we won't be here that long. Usually I'll give it a little longer than that, but uh, we don't have that. Uh, we don't have that luxury right now. The limited amount of time we will be here. Okay. And she can close. We'll give her her meds. She did very, very well. Thank you very much. One day I'll Good become job. a dentist. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> All right. Should be good to go. Thank you, Simon. <laughs>